All right, so this blog is about metaverse on the horizon. Um, I'd like to welcome our panelists. So our moderator is Diana Fox, uh, and she's going to be as well uh, with Drew Austin, Lauren Sugarman, Jordan Park, and Jana Bushmileva. Uh, so I'll please ask you all to give them a very warm welcome to our panelists. Thank you. Hello. Hi, everyone. It's so good to be here. Uh, my name is Diana. I run an agency called Beyond All the Noise. Um, we focus on getting brands from Web 2 to Web 3, and we're here to talk about the metaverse. So, starting from Drew, if you can introduce yourself and all the fun things you're working on. <laughs> Hey everybody, uh, I'm Drew Austin, I'm the founding partner over at Redbeard Ventures, which is a venture capital syndicate as well as a venture capital fund. We invest uh, in frontier technologies and then primarily Web3 and blockchain uh, ecosystem. We've invested in companies like Dapper Labs, Zed Run, Sandbox, Wilder World, Unstoppable Domains, and many others. Um, and uh, I also run an NFT project called Knights of DGEN. Um, and uh, we are partners actually with Horizon. We're working on the token together, the token design. And, uh, you know, Knights of Degen is really like a sports meets Web3 uh, ecosystem. And we're trying to kind of replicate and bring that kind of like that Vegas sports bar like experience where you can watch games, play, bet, eat, drink, hang out with friends, but do that at a di digital and global scale in the metaverse. And uh, it's been a really exciting project to work on. Hi, I'm uh, Lauren Sugarman. I'm the CEO of a company called The Metaverse Group. We're a Web3 technology business, so we have a Web3 agency where we bring brands and corporates into the metaverse uh, and provide them with strategies. We also have the land ownership piece where we own in 10 plus metaverses today, Decentraland, Sandbox being some of them. Uh, metaverse Fashion Week was recently held on our land about six months ago as an example in Decentraland. Uh, and we build out those, those lands using our team of software designers and gamers to make those experiences uh, fun and unique. And uh, last but not least, we're building out technologies such as what we call Ecom3, which are allowing for e-commerce to uh, happen in Web3 technologies. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jordan Park. I'm the COO of Opus Group. Uh, we're a blockchain software development company, so we do a couple of things. Uh, the first project that we're currently working on is a free-to-play, play-to-earn um, blockchain-based game called OppiPets. Uh, the second thing that we're working on, and probably uh, one of our bigger projects, is we're building a decentralized cloud computing network uh, using mobile technology. Um, yeah, and obviously, more to come in the future. Hello, my name is Jana. I'm the Chief Operation Officer at Fashionbee. I'm an expert in fashion industry and digital marketing. And in these uh, last years, let's say my mission is to bring top luxury brands into the Web3 space. Thank you. Thank you, guys. OK, so hot topic. What is the metaverse to you? Right? I think when everybody talks about the metaverse, there's so many different ideas, um, iterations. What is it um, and where is it going, Drew? What is it and where is it going? Um, so what is it? I would say that the metaverse is um, kind of like the digital, rep the digital um, kind of manifestation of our physical world in a way. So I look at it as an immersive experience that's global and digital at scale that enables, um, that's open in terms of uh, like ownership and, and, and decentralized in nature where the digital assets and um, and currencies and and uh, businesses are um, are you know Web three empowered and decentralized in nature and be able to be owned and brought from one ecosystem to another so in, and interoperable in nature. Um, you know where it's heading. Like I, you know the thing I think about the metaverse every day is like I'm on Zoom morning to night and I just don't see in five to ten years from now I'll be sitting on a Zoom call. That I, it has to become a more immersive, interactive experience. We are way too global 
um, as an ecosystem now to not have a more uh, kind of interactive like experience when engaging and doing business with people all over the world. So I think we're just you know we're we're at the very beginning. Of, uh, of true digital asset ownership, and, uh, and I think that the metaverse is gonna create an entirely new wave of job opportunities, careers, and I think we're literally just scratching the absolute surface of it. Thank you. So I think uh, you know, the metaverse, if people view it as AR and VR and other things. My, my simple view is it's an immersive experience that's any 3D experience. So it can be browser-based, it can be in multiple different, different ways. I think where the future comes is when, you know, hopefully Apple brings out their AR glasses or the next iterations of VR glasses that are better, faster, et cetera, that make it an even more immersive and emerging experience. Now, bringing into the, the Web3 concepts, which Drew was talking a little bit about, is around the creative community, around creators, around ownership, around digital currencies, all those other things. But I, I think it, it, we need to remember that there's also the Web 2 piece of it, such as Roblox and, and Minecraft and others out there that are also part of the metaverse in our view as well, even though they don't bring those Web 3 initiatives to, and hopefully they will evolve and, and include those elements in their uh, you know, roadmaps forward. But those are also part of the metaverse in our view as well. For me, the metaverse is actually the next stage in people connecting with each other. Um, I think that over the coming years, uh, it'll kind of define the way in which we interact with each other, the way in which we work together and collaborate, uh, the way in which we buy and sell uh, both physical and the corresponding digital goods across uh, the blockchain, but also across just the entire market it's, itself. Uh, and I really think it's going to facilitate um, that people connecting globally uh, in a lot easier uh, and more seamless way. Let's be honest. We're trying to give a definition to something that doesn't really exist, right? So we have here brilliant minds, and I believe everyone has his, her own version of the metaverse. So definitely it's about immersive experience. And I personally see two scenarios. First is when we will have, you know, like a digitalized version of our daily lives, when within the metaverse we can access usual services, take a loan from the bank, pass some exams. Second scenario is the more about fantasy world, you know, escape from reality. Both these scenarios can coexist. And for sure, to make it happen, first of all, we need good connection, friend of mine just stayed in the luxury hotel in Milan, five stars, and he has no, con no Wi-Fi connection, you know? So we cannot build a metaverse without the speedy, accessible connection, hardware, software, and of course, those creative minds who will basically visualize, digitalize, program this immersive experience. Thank you. All right, so we have some interesting uh, ideas as to what the metaverse will do, what problems it will help to solve. Obviously, we're a little bit away from that being a reality, given that we don't have great Wi-Fi, and that's a starting point. Um, so first step, solve for that. Um, what do you guys see as the current trend in this space, knowing that we're not there yet, but what are you seeing in the present? I'll start with you, Drew. Uh, I think, I th you know, I think we're starting with a few things. I think right now we're, we're laying the groundwork. Um, and, you know, how does that, in what form does that come? I think a few things. It started with, um, I think we'd started with DeFi. Um, that was the first, that was the first building block of what I think the future of the metaverse will be. In a, in a world that's, that's not, that's borderless and digital in nature, um, obviously the financial infrastructure and currency has to meet that, uh, has to meet there. Second, I think then it worked, then it started with, evolved into identity. And that's where we're seeing things like profile pictures and NFTs that of art and collectibles, things that represent who you are, what you're interested in, what you like to do, your hobbies. Um, so I think that was really, so I think PFPs and NFTs, uh, communities and clubs, that, uh, that feeling of belonging, that's really been step two of this foundation. I think step three um, of what I'm seeing a lot of is the DAO infrastructure. 
Because if we're going to have a metaverse, we have to be able to have businesses in this world. And what is the structure of that? How are they organized? How are they operate? How do we run businesses and organize people to, to be productive in a, in a decentralized world? So I think that's the, the third step. I think the next big step that we're going to see over the next you know, 12 to 24 months will be play to earn gaming. I think that the gaming economy is going to be the biggest driver of new Web3 users um, since NFTs. So I think that's going to be a very exciting moment for us. And I also think that we're going to see a big movement of like the future of work. I think there's going to be a lot of infrastructure tooling around how people are can be productive and do business and um, and communicate at a, a, a in more effective ways within this metaverse. So I think those are some of the immediate near-term things that I'm seeing. A lot of infrastructure. We have a lot of work to do. I mean, this is a world where it's still just so early, and you know, there's security. There's you know, there's just a million different pieces of this. So I think the infrastructure, I think gaming, and I think that um, you know, a lot of future of work type of things are going to be the next major movements in uh, the metaverse. So I think what we're seeing today, if you look at the existing metaverses, especially outside, going to the Web3, the, the decentralized metaverses, is there's a lack of adoption in my view, frankly. And so Decentraland today you know, is, is probably the one that has the most adoption just based on the fact that it's, it's, it's always on, for lack of a better way of saying it. It's not like Sandbox going through multiple alpha seasons. And so that, that adoption piece needs to come. And so what, what we really need to have is, and Drew mentioned this a little bit, is these gamified experiences, these experiences that make it unique and drive adoption into the metaverses. And so what we're starting to see is many more people thinking through, you know, what are the elements I need to have a successful metaverse project? So it's not just about NFTs that are PFPs, that are just simple pictures that don't bring utility. It's, it's about, you know, bringing community utility to these events, bringing more to, to the table that drives it. And so, you know, whether that's through knowledge, uh, you know, and work, which is, we see many examples of companies coming to us that are looking to create different types of experiences around knowledge and work, whether that's around e-commerce and shopping experience and creating malls, and again, unique experiences where you drive community and loyalty using NFTs and other things like that. And so you're seeing more and more experiences that make it more immersive and drive more adoption and make it, make us all want to go back to the, to, to the metaverse, kind of like what happened in the initial uh, ongoing of the web, where initially, you know, it wasn't very interesting, but we found use cases that drove us to adopt it. Uh, yeah, I actually uh, resonate with quite a lot of what actually Drew said. Uh, we think the play to earn space is going to be absolutely massive uh, when it comes to the metaverse uh, in the coming years. I think when it comes to uh, the gaming industry as a whole and that audience, um, they were an audience already quite accustomed to living in a digital space already and spending a lot of time there. So it was an easy transition for them. But uh, I think there's a couple other industries which uh, we're seeing coming into the metaverse um, which have seen a really huge success. Uh, number one is, is being the ent entertainment industry um, with live events, uh, you know, concerts being hosted within the metaverse, um, which are seeing huge pop uh, popularity um, today. Uh, another area which I think is uh, hugely underestimated is the role of AR in the metaverse uh, and how that's going to integrate into it. Um, I think when it comes to the VR side, um, you know, there, although it is growing, uh, the technology still in terms of price point is a little bit out of reach for a large number of the global population, whereas already a huge number of people, in fact most of the global population, do have a cellular device in, in one way or another. Uh, and using that cellular device and augmented reality uh, in conjunction with the metaverse is something I think we're going to see a lot more of uh, in the coming two to three years. I can speak for the industry that I know very well, fashion. And here then, Trudeau, it's definitely gaming because this is, you know, such a huge market and fashion brands using it for the PR, marketing, definitely not to earn as of now, but just to demonstrate that, look, we know <laughs> that there is a Web3. 
And Roblox, one of the most favorite platforms for the brands. We have Bulgari there, Gucci World, Nike. So this is like an entry door. Second trend is that still fashion and luxury brands cannot you know, switch completely to the digital products. Even, one, even then, uh, when they sell NFT, they give you the physical product you know, as an attachment to this token so you can wear and show it to your peers and vice versa. You buy NFT, you receive the physical product. Just for them, it's the main business. I mean, they cannot switch. So who knows, maybe in the future when uh, we will be, you know, so uh, connected to the metaverse, we won't need physical clothes and it will be enough just to download the Gucci Parton, you know, program your crazy suit and change the Parton every day without any CO2 emissions <laughs> to the world. So these are the trends that currently I can name for the fashion industry. All right, we have 14 seconds left. Um, quick round, favorite uh, metaverse? Uh, Wilder World. Um, and it's not just getting started, but Wilder World. Uh, Decentraland, just uh, community-based and existing today. Oh yeah, 100% agree, Decentraland. Mine is, currently in the building process in the partnership with XLA Solutions. So you will see it shortly. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much.